I know I say this every year, but I just want to make sure we're clear on this because I was talking to someone recently who comes to Mass every week and they were confused about what the Immaculate Conception was because I announced this past weekend about the Feast of the Immaculate Conception on Mary's Conception and then uh, that nine months later is her birthday and people are saying, wait a second, Jesus' birthday is December 25th. I'm saying, no, 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 you misunderstood. The Immaculate Conception is not about the conception of Jesus in the womb of Mary. We celebrate that, strangely enough, on March 25th, which is, um, oh yeah, exactly nine months before Christmas. So this is about Mary being conceived, where Mary first starts to exist in the womb of her mother, St. Anne. And it's immaculate. I had to explain this to first graders the other day. What does immaculate mean? And they were like, uh, 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 uh. And so I said it means clean without stain. The, the teacher in the classroom said, what does the desk fairy come to look at and see are the desks clean or not? Uh, and so that, that we look and we say, this is, this is Mary being conceived without stain, without sin. From the first moment that she existed, she was without sin and throughout her whole life existed without sin. And I was pondering over, why did the Church choose these readings for the Feast of the Immaculate Conception? We look and we see the first sin, and the results of the first sin. Where are you, God says. Oh, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid myself. And then Adam blames Eve, Eve blames the serpent, and God says to the serpent, okay, this is what's going to happen to you. But the Proto-Evangelium. The first gospel. I will put enmity between you and the woman, between your offspring and hers. He will strike at your head while you strike at his heel. That there is now going to be one who is so completely against Satan without sin. The man called his wife Eve because she became the mother of the living and Mary is the new Eve, the mother of all the living. And so we sing to the Lord a new song, for He has done marvelous deeds through Mary. And then in the, gospel, in the second reading, rather, it says, For He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world to be holy and without blemish in His sight. That we are to be holy and without blemish in His sight. This is the promise that God gives us by dying on the cross, that we will be without blemish before Him, if we allow His grace, His mercy to work in our lives. But that's not going to be on this side of the grass for us. That's only when we finally get to heaven. But Mary is the foreshadowing of that. Mary experienced that even from the first moment of her existence, that she would be holy and without blemish. And then in the Gospel, while it is the story of the Annunciation, it also gives us a clue into the Immaculate Conception. Mary conceived without sin. Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. And I'm remembering one seminary professor who used to say, Why do we believe that Mary is full of grace? Because we say, Hail Mary, full of grace. Not really very helpful there. <laughs> but, we look in the words in the Greek are basically saying that you are filled with this grace, fully full of grace. Not just now, but it's, it's a past. You have been full of grace, you are full of grace, and you will be full of grace. We get filled with grace in baptism, then we lose it, right? By our sin. So we have to go to confession, then we're refilled with that grace, and then we lose it by our sins. And so we're going back and forth. Mary was full of grace, is full of grace, will be full of grace. She's without sin. What beauty this is. As we were reading through, those of you who are doing the preparation for the consecration today, as we were reading through the St. Maximilian Kolbe section, we hear about St. Maximilian wrestling with why do we call Mary the Immaculate Conception? She was immaculately conceived, but why is her name, why is her identity Immaculate Conception? 
We know this because she reveals herself to St. Bernadette at Lourdes and says her name is, I am the Immaculate Conception. That's her name. And St. Maximilian wrestled with this and he came finally to that point where he said, the Immaculate Conception is divine. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that pure and perfect conception of God the Father and God the Son, that love which is so real it becomes a person, but not becoming in time, but becoming for all eternity. That there never was a time when the Holy Spirit was not. Always the Immaculate Conception. As, as Mary is wedded to the Holy Spirit, as she takes on uh, the, the role as Mother of God, the Father of, she is the Mother of Christ's humanity. Who is the Father of Christ's humanity? Not Joseph, we know that. But the Holy Spirit. He is the one moving in her who is the Father of the humanity of Jesus. And in that, he weds himself to Mary. And so she takes on his name as the Immaculate Conception. And this union, because they never got divorced, by the way, this union between Mary and the Holy Spirit. And so for those of us who are dedicated to Mary and we pray the rosary, whenever we with Mary, the Holy Spirit is there present. And those of you who are charismatic and you raise your hands and you sing in tongues and all those things, whenever we're invoking the Holy Spirit, Mary is there. They always work together. And we look to Mary today, asking her to send forth her spouse, the Holy Spirit, into our lives in such a powerful way to purify us, to cleanse us of our sins, to draw us into the very heart of God, so that we too, like her, can become tabernacles of the Most High. Very excited. <laughs> very excited about this. That we too can become tabernacles of the Most High. That as Mary, with the invocation of the Holy Spirit, takes on the very body of Christ within her, so we also become tabernacles of Christ. Let us ask Mary for that help that we may constantly be purifying our hearts, our minds, our souls, our bodies, so that we may be a worthy dwelling place as she was for Jesus Christ, her Son, our God.